everyone. I wanted to share this little project I just started working on and I thought, well, I'm going to turn on the camera and share it because it, it's looking like it might be really cute. Um, a while back in one of my older jelly printing videos, I had shown you that how I was um, laying these coasters on the jelly plate and just throwing some color on them. And so they've been sitting for as long as that video is old. I, I can't even remember when I made the video, but I'm going to put it in a little iCard right up here in the corner. And if you want to check out how I did these, <clears throat> excuse me, how I did these coasters on the jelly print, just click that little I. But I just, just realized today that I can use these. Um, not all of them. I'm not going to use these blue green ones and I'm not going to use these just because I have some other some other colors that work just as well. But what happened was I was in a restaurant one day and I asked the waitress if I could um have a couple of coasters to take home with me and she brought me back a whole stack of these things. This whole thing was full. So <laughs> almost full, I guess. But um so I've been trying to think, you know, of ways I can use them and stuff. And so I started out by jelly printing on them, but not really had any plan for a project. So that's how I came by the coasters. So I was in the grocery store last night, and I see this little package of adorable Halloween napkins. And we don't typically do a great big celebration for Halloween in my family, but my daughter is having a party this year because she got a great deal on some Halloween party supplies last year after the holiday was over. So she decided last year that she was going to have a party this year. So we're going to be going to her house. And so I thought, well, maybe I can take these home and figure out something to do with them. So I started peeling them apart and cutting out the little images. And that's when I remembered the coasters. And I thought, how cool would that be? I can take a little hostess gift to her and I will put the put the little Halloween images on these coasters. Which one am I missing? This one. So I'm leaving the painted side as the back, so I don't have to paint that, that's done. Okay, so it worked out really cool. I already had really good colors, like this purple one with the haunted house. I have purple paint on the back. <laughs> this one with the tree has an orange uh, color, so I'm, I'm kind of using that deep maroon with the yellow in there, kind of blended fine. The little ghost one on green, I'm doing on the screen, and I'm also doing the skeleton on the green one. So I've just been, you know, like I said, I cut out the images, and I've just been using the collage posh and sticking them down. I had one left to go, so I thought I would turn on the camera and just uh, show you what I've been doing. Just putting a little collage posh on. <clears throat> And I'm brushing it in just into you know the square shape like that I'm taking the image from the napkin and I'm just laying it where I see the points are going to the bottom there of the edge and then it uh, and then the rest of it kind of falls into the proper place there. And right now I'm just putting the collage posh underneath. I'm sure I will coat it again on the on the top at some point. I'm just deciding when that will be. I'm kind of doing the edges at the top also. <clears throat> But I'm just making sure now that there's enough underneath that the napkin is completely coated on all the edges and stuck down really well. Okay. And then I've basically <clears throat> just been taking my rag and, and giving it a good press. 
kind of wiping away the excess from the edges uh, outside the image. You know, if I use my hands, it, it wants to stick to my fingers and it pulls the napkin back up. But with the rag, it seems to be um, not doing that as much. That one did just now, little area there, but just mainly presses it in and it gets rid of some of that excess glue on the edge. I'm gonna press that down again. Okay. Right. <clears throat> okay. This section in the middle is not wet like the edges, <clears throat> so I'm able to touch it pretty well. Okay, so I've got all of those on. And now I'm going to, um, I was thinking I would take black paint and just paint around just the remaining area around the circle. <clears throat> and then um, when that's dry, I may come back in with um, like a Posca pens and, and just do a little bit of design on the border. So I'm going to put it probably in fast forward now so that it doesn't, you know, drag on. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, so I have the napkin Mod Podge down just underneath. I painted the uh, rest of the circle black and I edged it with the Stays On ink. Just now, I got my little spider stamp out. Love this stamp. <laughs> stamp Abilities uh, makes this one. And I decided I wanted to have something on the back. So I, I chose the spider. And as you see, it didn't stamp that well on the paint. It, it wants to kind of pull up the layer of paint that's on there. So um, what I did was I stamped a bunch of the spiders on the scrap paper, just regular copy paper. And I have a balloon stamp. I've, I've done this before. I, I did it on a card once. And... Uh, what I did on the card was I I stamped out the um, the spider's body again and popped it up on the stamped image on the base. And it was to cover up, you know, any imperfect stamping and also to give it dimension. But I'm not going to do the dimension this time, but I do want to make the face better and I don't want to have to color in each one of those. So I just stamped the spider and um, I have this little balloon stamp. It's the closest thing I have to an oval. And that's what I used the last time. But it's not quite um, big enough. You see there's still some white space left. I don't know if you can see that or not, but when I have it on there, it's just not quite, the, the, the balloon is just a tiny bit bigger is what I'm trying to say. And so there's a white space a white space around it. So I'm taking a Sharpie marker 
and I'm just, you know, making the spider's body just a little bit bigger, and this doesn't have to, you know, be correct or anything. It just has to be black because it's going to, I'm going to be punching out most of that. <clears throat> and just want to get, give him, give him a little bit more body. Okay, and then that way when I punch him with this, and then I'll have to cut the little balloon tail off of the, of the spider, but this is what I did before, and so I'm hoping it's going to work again. Let's see if I can get this lined up. Okay. So we end up with a little balloon. <laughs> All right. And then I just... Uh, snip off the little tail of the balloon and then I glue that right down on top of the spider and, and another reason I wanted to do it on this particular thing is because um, I wanted his eyes and his little smile to be white and of course when you see it stamped on here it's not it's the color that's underneath so it's not very defined so you can see how much difference this little spider looks so much better. So that's what I'm going to be doing here, just punching and um, and gluing on these little spiders. Be back soon. And now I'm just doodling um, around the pictures, um, outlining the uh, image in white, and and then just doodling in these black spaces here.
looks like he's been electrocuted. So they look really cool with the uh, coat of the collage page on. They look real, real rich and and um, you know that when you put Mod Podge or Collage Podge or matte medium type thing on top of the paint, it takes away that kind of chalky look that paint has, and it gives it that that really nice rich color. I like that. Okay, so I'm just using a really thin coat because I don't want to soak it and have these, you know, curl up or anything. So that's the idea behind that. And um, I really think it's pretty dry. Start, I mean, this is the first one I did a few minutes ago. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Alright, so I'm all finished and I wanted to give you a close-up look at each one of them. So I moved the camera down a little closer 
so that the light would be on it properly. Okay, so here's one. These are all um, uh, all finished, and also I uh, put on a little bit of that Daddy Vans so that they won't stick together. Of course, there's just the four pictures, but then all of the um, edges are a little different. They really turned out cute, I think, to have just been from a pack of napkins. <laughs> And the fact that I already have these um, painted, that really was handy. <laughs> and I put those on the jelly plate way back then, and I had no idea what I was going to do with them. But it just worked out that I had all the right colors, and couldn't have been any better. Some of these are similar, but I did a little bit different on each one. And there's the last one. So, what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm going to uh, wrap them up in uh, wrap them up in some orange tissue and I may if it works out fits right I may slide them into this little cellophane box I have to put something over that but um, if it doesn't work out with the box I'll just wrap them in the tissue and then I'm going to tie it up with some black and white twine so I think that'll make a nice little gift for her, for my daughter. So you can see how these are not sticking together. They're, that Daddy Vans works good. I've had it for a while, but this is the first time I've actually used it. So um, I'm glad to know that it works as well as everybody says it does. Not that I didn't believe anybody, but <laughs> I just hadn't done it yet. So sorry, I went out of frame. I forgot I was down close. So, um, so yeah. They're, um, they just, they slide, slide around real easily. They don't, um, but they're not slick or greasy or anything either. They're just right. Just right. And I love it. So, all right, guys. Thanks for joining me, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.